You are knowing what you are wanting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. An evolving thing, isn't it? Well, it's a trick question anyway. Because when you know something, you are it. And when you are it, it is. And when it is, of course you know it. And so when we say, are you knowing what you are wanting? Sometimes you think that we mean, do you know? Have you identified those not yet fulfilled intentions? And it could mean that, but it's not what we mean. We mean, is your desire and your chronic pattern or habit of thought in sync? Because, oh, what a nice place to be that is. When you want something, and even though it has not yet filled in with all of the delicious manifested details still, you know it. You're a vibrational match to it. You know that you are vibrational beings? Sort of, kind of starting to get the hang of that, aren't you? Do, are you? do you believe that you are at the point where you are primarily able or maybe even willing is a better word able or willing to accept yourself as vibrational first and everything else following that it's tricky because you are so good at interpreting the vibration that you are and that you live within through your physical senses that you don't realize that you are vibrational because your interpretation is so vivid so you get really hooked on what you're seeing so when you use the expression something is it is you usually mean I can see it or I can hear it or I can smell it or I can taste it or I can touch it it's vividly translated through my physical senses and so it is a reality but we want to help you to begin accepting isness by its emotional content because when you accept it by its emotional content rather than by its filled out in terms of what you see and hear and smell and taste and touch now you can sync up with it vibrationally more easily because you're aware of the isness of it stay with us this is going to make sense in a while you're aware that it is even though you can't see it you're aware that it is even though you can't hear it you're aware that it is by the emotional content of it you feel it and the advantage the advantage to you in making that sort of weird because most people you know aren't doing it bold new way approach to life is that oh it's so big it, it's such an important thing you'll no longer be faced with the absence of anything that matters to you so you'll no longer be practicing that absent vibration at the same time that you're practicing the desire vibration so you will stop slowing things down in fact you will speed things up when you give your attention to something your attention to it causes a vibrational movement within you and if you focus for as little as 17 seconds there is enough momentum in that vibration that another thought like it is drawn to it do that for another 17 seconds and then another until you cross the 68 second mark and you have enough momentum going that now it's possible for evidence to reveal itself to you or better said for you to realize the evidence that is being revealed because it's always being revealed it's being revealed vibrationally the question is are you sensitive enough to realize the revelation of this you see so so many humans are running around wanting things the universe is delivering them or delivering a very clear path of least resistance to them but because they're hung up on seeing the full blown version of them and they are not sensitive enough to emotion and therefore to vibration to recognize that it is unfolding and that the momentum is underway then they get freaky about the absence of it and they start a whole different kind of momentum going so we're going to be talking today about vibration you'll get so you like it we'll be talking about 
momentum of vibration. We're going to talk about law of attraction because everything is about those things. And when you begin to deliberately view life through this vibrational lens, which means feel life through this emotional lens, what's going to be happening is, first of all, you're going to be feeling way, 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 way better because you'll learn to tune yourself to the higher frequencies that do feel good. And next, all kinds of things that have seemed like they were sort of stalled out will begin to flow easily, effortlessly into your experience because you will have discontinued the kind of momentum that prevents what you want from coming. Does that make some sense to you? We love the concept of momentum. Imagine that you're at the top of the hill. Esther always comes to the image of San Francisco because she was shocked the first time she was there at what she was expected to drive on. Those streets are ridiculous. So imagine yourself at the top of one of those hills in San Francisco and your car is out of gear and you don't have the parking brake on and you are outside the car standing next to it looking down and just for fun you bump your car a little bit from behind and you begin to notice that it begins to move downward but it's not moving very fast and so before things get away from you you just step right out in front of the car and you let it bump up against you and all is well but can you imagine if you were at the bottom of the hill with the intention of stopping the momentum of that car it would carry you away into unwanted things so momentum is an easy thing to understand when you think of your physical physics but we want you to begin contemplating it in terms of vibration in terms of law of attraction because law of attraction is the mechanism of momentum when you give your attention to a thought that thought vibrates and momentum begins and more thoughts like it will join it and if you get enough momentum going then it begins manifesting in ways that is obvious to others who are observing and maybe even more obvious to you so as we've been talking to you through the years about deliberate creation and we're wanting you to understand that you are the creator of your own experience we want you to understand that the reason that you are the creator of your own experience is because you are the offerer of the vibration and therefore the creator or the allower of the momentum. Law of attraction is this very fair based law that does not distinguish between whether you want that thing that you've got momentum going about or not. Law of attraction just says you like this, here's more. You don't like this, here's more you're giving your attention to it so here's more so deliberate creation really is about gaining deliberate control over what you're offering vibrationally but before you can gain control over what you're offering vibrationally you have to know how to measure it you have to know what the momentum is you have to understand that what you are feeling is more of what you're getting Jerry used to say, and Esther loved it when he said it because it was a different way of saying something that she had heard a long time. He used to say, when you plant a seed of corn, you don't get a tulip. <laughs> and Esther thought about that. She concurred. When you plant a seed of, a, of, a, of anything, the plant that comes is a vibrational match to the seed that you've planted. So we want to submit to you that when you wake up in the morning and you recall something unwanted from yesterday, you've planted a seed of something unwanted that has the potential, the very real potential of manifesting in this day. Esther had the most glorious experience last weekend at the fair with grandchildren who got off on different foots or is it feet? <laughs> Kate got off on the life is good and treats me good foot and Luke got off on the it's not fair and nothing goes well for me foot and it was like watching that seed sprout into a full blown plant all day long <laughs> everything that Kate did all the little 
joints where she was trying to win. Most of them she won. Nothing would go well for Luke. It was such an interesting thing to watch. And Esther took more delight than maybe she should have. <laughs> in observing the way their days were unfolding. Of course, wanting both of them to live happily ever after and realizing that they change roles quite often and most of all she recognized the Kate in herself and the Luke in herself in other words she recognized that some days she's in a point of attraction that's not going that well and so she's been thinking a lot about planting the happy seed and and what that will produce we've been talking to you for quite a while about being the creator of your own experience and we explained to you that you were source energy before you came into these physical bodies and even though you are in this physical body now the larger part of you that larger source energy part of you remains non-physically focused and is in a very high flying good feeling vibrational place and you have a vibrational relationship with that very high flying good feeling aspect of you in fact, every emotion that you feel is your indicator of whether you're in sync with that flawless, meaning resistant, free aspect of yourself, or whether you've picked up enough along your physical trail and, this is the most important thing you will hear from us today or maybe ever, and activated in this day and are using it as a point of resistance against who you really are. We want you to understand that your momentum is something that you start every morning and it doesn't need to go past sleeping that night. But it often does because you're so good at remembering what happened yesterday. You're so good at blogging about it. <laughs> Writing it down, remembering it, conversing about it, repeating it. You're so good at keeping the unwanted and wanted things active that you get sort of all of those things. And so Esther recognizes that she has the potential of flying high, getting to that really good feeling place and maintaining it. And that if she's deliberately doing it every morning, she has a better chance of doing it the next morning and the next morning and the next morning and the next morning. We've been talking to you for a while about all kinds of processes that you can use to clarify your vibration, processes that help you to release resistance. But now that we are talking about the momentum of your reality, the momentum that is caused by the law of attraction, we really want to say to you that if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would go to bed the night before intending to have a good day tomorrow, planting that seed of happy. And then when we awaken, we would focus as quickly as we can on anything that we could find that makes us feel in the direction of happy. And then we would see what that day brings not struggling or trying too hard to clamber back up the emotional scale. We've been offering you a story. In fact, it may be our favorite story that we sort of kind of get from you. Because sometimes it is as if you say to us, Abraham, I have fallen out of an airplane and I have no parachute. What do you suggest that I now do? And our favorite answer to you is hang on it will be over in a little bit <laughs> and we really mean that and it is what we want to say to you in many ways about the negative emotion that you're feeling rather than clambering really hard to try to fix it which for you usually means justify it rather than clambering so hard to just it or fix it in the middle of negative momentum just let that negative momentum play itself out it will and we want to say to you emphatically that one day's focus is enough momentum for you to allow anything that you want to flow into your experience